السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My beloved brothers and sisters When the Muslims were persecuted in Mecca to Al-Mukarram Allah Almighty instructed that they undertake the migration known as the Hijrah This Hijrah happened more than once The first one was to Abyssinia what we know today as broader Ethiopia. And the second one was the major one known as the Hijra that the Muslims undertook to Medina Munawwara. Why did they go there? They went there because they were being persecuted in Mecca. They could not establish their prayer. They could not live as Muslims. So they had to leave their own belongings, their own land, their families and so on. And they had to go to a place where they had freedom of religion to practice their faith. When they arrived in Medina Munawwara, obviously they were in large numbers. And the people in Medina Munawwara were also in large numbers, but it would never be easy to welcome thousands of people to your town or your city and to open your doors to them, not for one day or one week, or not for a month, but for as long as it takes. You know, it is actually unlimited. You don't know how long they're going to stay. And Allah Almighty chose those who were living in Medina to be there at the time. And He chose those who were the companions of Muhammad to be the companions. If it was us in their place, one wonders whether we would have actually supported the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam or simply paid lip service to it. May Allah grant us goodness. The reason I say this is today when we are told that Allah has said this subhanahu wa ta'ala or that Muhammad peace be upon him has said that people think that ah, it's okay, you know, I know my heart is good, my heart is clean, Allah knows my heart is okay, even though I'm not dressed appropriately, I drink alcohol perhaps, or whatever else someone might be involved in, that's not good enough, my brothers and sisters, as much as human weakness is acknowledged by Allah, but you cannot intentionally continue to sin and keep on claiming that your heart is clean. Remember that. Because our hearts are definitely clean, inshallah, when it comes to the feeling towards one another sometimes. We think so at least. But are they really clean? The cleanest of hearts are those that are ready to sacrifice for the sake of Allah. So Allah Almighty in Surah al hashr Allah speaks about the types of people and praises their qualities and says those are the successful. Starting off with those known as the Muhajirin. Allah says, Lil Fukara il Muhajirin al Ladina Ukhriju min diarim wa amwalim Yabtahuna fadlam min Allah wa ridwana wa yansurun Allah wa rasulah Ula ikahumus sadikun. The Muhajirun are those who left Mecca. The Muslims, the companions who left Mecca and migrated to Medina. They were the migrants. They were the ones who migrated. Allah says, the poor Muhajirun who left their homes, their properties, seeking the virtue of Allah. What does that mean? What was the virtue of Allah? The ability to worship Allah the way Allah wants to be worshipped. That is the virtue of Allah. They did not leave their homes in order to earn wealth. They did not leave their homes in order to achieve something worldly. They left their homes in order to be able to pray correctly, in order to be able to fulfill the deen correctly. Without persecution, Allah calls that fadl min Allah. Allah will give thereafter the world. He will throw it at your feet. When you rush towards the one who owns the globe, he will give you that globe. But when you rush towards the globe, what will happen between you and the one who owns it? May Allah grant us ease. Remember this. It's very easy. Don't ever earn in the displeasure of Allah. In something Allah has prohibited, there, will, there might be temporary pleasure. It's not going to come with a lot of goodness in the near future. You earn 
with the pleasure of Allah. Even if it is hard, be honest to yourself, to Allah. How long is life? We've heard of death upon death. Today we heard of a death again. May Allah grant the marhumin jannatul firdaus. You don't know. There's no point in earning something in the displeasure of Allah. Allah calls the muhajirun truthful because they accepted Islam in Mecca when it was very difficult to accept Islam. Many people today who want to revert to Islam, I'd like to think in some communities and societies they would get a reward very, very high, perhaps not exactly equal to the Muhajirun, but who knows? Allah alone knows how difficult it is to declare that you're a Muslim at a time on the globe where Muslims are looked at with an eye of skepticism. May Allah protect us. So Allah says they were truthful. They knew they followed what was in their heart. They were true in their belief when they declared Allah is alone to be worshipped. They were really truthful. So Allah says they, the Muhajirun, are the ones who left their homes, their properties and so on in order to go to Medina Munawwara to earn the pleasure of Allah. And, the, and in order to earn from the bounty and virtue of Allah in a halal way, in a beautiful way, Allah says they are the truthful ones. May Allah make us from those who realize that Allah comes first. The rest of it will follow. Those muhajirun had almost nothing when they deserted or they had to leave their homes. In a few days, they started earning sustenance because the owner of the universe started throwing it towards them because they rushed towards him. Abdurrahman ibn Awf radiallahu anhu arrived in Medina Munawwara penniless. He, do you know, and I'm going to get to this, they shared with the Ansar and who are the Ansar? I'll get to that too. But he had nothing at that juncture. He told his brother, and here when I say brother, I'm talking of a special type of a brother, a brother that the relationship was fostered through migration. And he said, show me where the marketplace is. That evening he came back with a prophet. My man, you went to the market without a penny. How did you come back with a prophet? That's Allah. Amazing. May Allah grant that to us. In a short time, Abdurrahman ibn Awf radiallahu anhu became known as one of the most wealthy from among the companions. Now let's get to the second category of people whom Allah has praised. The Ansar. Who are the Ansar? The people who lived in Medina who were the proprietors of the properties in Medina, who owned the businesses in Medina, they were welcoming their brothers in faith only, not in blood. Today we are not prepared to welcome a blood brother, but they were prepared to welcome more than a blood brother, a brother in faith. You say the Shahada, I say the Shahada. You're being persecuted, come to my home. That wasn't enough. I will give you half of my property, Allahu Akbar. We are not prepared to give half of our property to our own brothers. We fight over a few dollars and cents. But when it came to the Ansar, they shared that which they needed at times themselves. Allah praises that quality and He makes it known clearly that that is why they are successful. Because they protected their, their souls and themselves from the love of this world to the degree that even that which they needed, they gave it away when someone else needed it more. We will manage, don't worry, look at these people. Subhanallah, they welcomed them in their homes, they lived in their homes. These are the Ansar, the people of Medina. And the relationship, the Prophet ﷺ, through revelation, dictated to them that you will live with a family from among the Muhajirun. So each one was assigned a family. Imagine a strange family coming into your house, not for a day, two days, for a lifetime. And you have to share with them half of what you have. And they will inherit you when you die. People are not prepared to allow their own sisters to inherit. They want to cheat the people here and there. And they want to try and cut out someone and do whatever they wish. When look at the Ansar, Allah loved them because they were prepared to share with total strangers. The only bond was the bond of La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. Half of what I have is yours, my beloved brother. And I don't even know you besides through the link of the Shahada. Where are we today? We claim to be an ummah. Trust me, we won't even do this to our blood brothers and sisters. Allah knows the hearts, right? Allah says those who opened up their homes for their brothers who came to them making the migration and they love them. Subhanallah. They love their brothers. Allah knows the love. Imagine you love someone, fi sabilillah. I'm ready for this guy to come and live in my home, subhanallah, to share with me half of what I have. Allah says, 
ولا يجدون في صدورهم حاجة مما أوتوا ويؤثرون على أنفسهم ولو كان بهم خصاصة Allah says they don't find that bond in their heart the attachment to what they are given in terms of material wealth they are prepared and they have shared it they give preference to others over themselves are you ready to give preference to someone who's a total stranger who's only connected to you through la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah and you are ready to give to them something you need the answer with us is a no it's a no may allah forgive us that's why we are not sahaba but for them allah says وَمَنْ يُوقَ شُحَّ نَفْسِهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Those who save themselves from the stinginess of their own souls are the truly successful. When you realize, I'm not the only important person here. People are more important than I am. When you realize, it's not all about myself. Like they say, me, myself and I. It's about us. I care for you. My brother, you need something I need. But you need it more than I need. If I'm a true believer, I will give it to you. Not for you, for the sake of Allah. Big difference. You know when I give you something for you, I expect you to be nice to me. I expect you to say, hey, thanks a lot. It's a good thing. It's good character. But when I gave you for the sake of Allah, I don't expect that. I don't expect it. Allah speaks about it in Surah Tudar. Allah speaks about the good people. And Allah says, يُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَسِيرًا إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَاءً وَلَا شُكُورًا They feed for the love of Allah, the people who are poor, the people who are orphans, etc, etc. And they say to them, we are feeding you for the sake of Allah. We don't even want to thank you from you. And we don't even want you to show us the gratitude. Thanks is for Allah. Where are we today? That's why sometimes, and this will happen a lot, Allah tests us. You do something good to someone for many years. That is the guy who's going to talk against you and fight you. You know why? Allah wants to test you. Did you do it for me or for him? If you did it for him, it's over, it's closed. If you did it for me, you will see the reward of it. Even when he is fighting you, it's okay. You'll be so happy. Allah used me to do good to them. Today they are doing bad to me. It's okay. Oh Allah, my hisab and my account is written with you. The point I want to raise now, my brothers and sisters, learn a lesson. And let us all, myself included, learn a lesson from the Ansar. Allah gave them wealth and Allah gave the Muhajireen wealth as well. When they learned that I belong to Allah and this wealth is temporary, I will share it with my brothers, my sisters. Whatever Allah has given you, share it. Life is too short. How much are you going to amass for yourself? Share it with others. Try to think of what others need, reach out to them, talk to them, help them, give them a good word. People are going through a lot of hardship. We are all going through hardship. In the hardship, are you prepared to say that one is going through more hardship than I am? Let me give him something for now. La ilaha illallah. Today we're going through a lot. The globe is changing while we are speaking. Trust me. Allah says, Ula'ika humul muflihun. The true successful people are those who put others before themselves. Those are successful. Otherwise, you will not achieve success. When you put yourself before others, you will not achieve success. And this is the difference between materialism and faith in Allah. Allah teaches you, you know what? You are one. Yes, you are also an important person by the will of Allah. But others are equally important, if not more important. Are you prepared to reach out to them? Allah says, you know what? They are the successful ones, those who reach out to others at a time of need when they are all in need. May Allah grant us a good lesson and may Allah Almighty open our doors. I want to end off by saying thereafter in the surah, Allah praises those who followed, including all of us, those who followed in the footsteps of the companions of Rasulullah May Allah grant us from his mercy. May Allah make us from those who love one another. May Allah make us from those who can take care of one another, who reach out to one another. And may Allah grant us ultimate success and Jannatul Firdaus. May Allah cure those who are sick and ill and grant rahmah to those who have passed away and make it easy for the families of those who've lost loved ones. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad. 
How much do you want on earth? How many millions do you want to make on earth? You've already made so much. Do you really need it? The answer is no, you don't need it. It's just extra and excess. I like to ask the children and I've asked them, how much money do you want to make in your life? Now in Zimbabwe, the figure has spiraled because obviously the zeros mean nothing anymore. But before, when money was money, they would say, I just want to make a million, then I can retire. I promise you, some of the adults will tell you, we made the first million, we went for the next one. We went the next one, we went for the 10. We, went, we made the 10, we wanted to go and go and go, and it does not stop. And how much are you going to use on earth? I promise you, not more than a few dollars. That's it. After that, your children, your family members will fight over that money when you're gone. Your brothers, brothers, stop speaking to each other only because of money, nothing else. Throw the money away and have your mahabba, have your love. It's better for you. May Allah grant us goodness. Throw your money away. You don't need it. Love is more important. Your relationship with your brother is far more important than that money. But you don't realize. If I were to ask you, put a value, put a price tag upon the money, sorry, upon the relationship you have, you cannot. You want happiness. How much are you going to pay for happiness? I want to give you another example. People fear. What did I say earlier? Fear and sadness. Right? That's the topic today. Fear and sadness. How? In the Jannah, it's not going to be there. On earth, it is there. But if you have a relation with Allah, Allah minimizes it to a bare minimum. لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون. Good relationship with Allah. Why should I fear? I lay my trust in Allah. So you have, subhanallah, a person... What would he pay for one heartbeat? One heartbeat. When your heart starts pumping a bit too fast or a bit too slow, what do you do? Spend money to go where? Doctor, specialist, fly off to somewhere, university, in wherever. You fly off here, medical, this, that. If you've got a lot of money, you'll end up in the top hospital in the world. You know why? You don't want that heart to stop for one beat. Allahu Akbar. And you spent 100 million. Why? One heartbeat. Agree? Allah tells you, lay your trust in me. It's okay. You'll be calm, cool. You do your salah. Imagine you're so excited because Allah gave you the chance to put your head on the ground for him. Did you know Allah chooses who he wills? To put their heads on the ground for him. It's not easy. Yes, you make an effort. But Allah either accepts that effort or rejects it. So many people live right next door to the masjid. You'll never see them there. And so many people live far away. They'll drive all the way there. Subhanallah. So many people live in Makkah. They haven't seen the haram inside. They've never been for hajj. And there are others who live in Indonesia. And they are gone for hajj every so often. Or at least their dream is one day we're going to go there. That's Allah. Allah accepts and rejects. رب العزة والجلال